Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening, this is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the autocorrelation problem. So, in the last last lecture we have discussed the basic framework of autocorrelations. So, let me highlight here what is the basic issue of autocorrelation. So, for autocorrelation uh, we have the a uh, function like this y t equal to alpha plus beta x t okay, plus u t. So, here u t is equal to rho u t minus 1 plus b t. Okay. <coughs> so, by the way if you expand then you know u t ultimately will come to uh, you know uh, it will be summation rho to the power s b t minus s and a uh, s equal to 0 to you can say uh, n okay or you can call it infinitive when it will equal to infinitive then obviously the structure of autocorrelation is like this <coughs> so now the framework we have already discussed so right now we will be very specific what is exact the issue how you have to detect what is its impact and how it is means how we are going to solve this particular problem. So, that means, so far as autocorrelation is concerned, so we like to highlight here what is the exact problem, what is the problem of autocorrelations. Okay. Second is what are the causes, okay. what, are, what are the causes of autocorrelations okay third consequences consequences for detections then fifth a removal measures <coughs> so all together five components we are going to discuss so what is the basic framework of autocorrelations what are the causes, why autocorrelation happens, then uh, what are the consequences, then detection criteria, then the procedural measures. Okay. So, now <coughs> autocorrelation basically deals with correlation among the same variables that too in error terms here, in a, it is a deductive part of regression modeling or you know econometric modeling. So, the moment uh, you, you see what is the actual procedure of econometric modeling. So, you have the mathematical form of the model, then you get the statistical form of the model, then uh, uh, you, you estimate the model, you have the estimated model. So, now true model, estimated model by the way will get the error terms. So, now the moment you will get the error term, then the game will be very interesting. So, the way we will analyze the error terms will be one of the one of such problem will be call as a autocorrelation problem. So, that means autocorrelation is the correlation or uh, it is the linear association among the error terms in this particular you know econometric setup. So, now uh, 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 you, you know autocorrelations uh, you know like multicollinearity it is the degree of association okay degree of association among the error terms in the multicollinearity we are discussing degree of association among the regressor that to linear in nature but in the case of autocorrelation it may not be very specific uh, linear issue it may be non linear in nature okay so that means it may be positive it may be negative it may be linear it may be non linear like this okay <coughs> So, now once you have y, oh, y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t, then u t equal to rho 
or rho ut minus 1 plus bt ok so rho generally lies between minus 1 to plus 1 so, ok so you see here rho is the you know rho is the signal of autocorrelation problem signal of autocorrelation autocorrelation problem ok signal of autocorrelation problem you see uh, then there are you know three extremes so rho equal to 0 rho equal to minus 1 rho equal to 1 rho greater than 1 and rho less than 1 ok so these are the five uh, these, these are the three extremes and uh, uh, besides there are two other cases ok so if rho equal to 0 then it is an indication of no autocorrelation so that means there is no degree of association uh, 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 between the two error terms so that is called as a no autocorrelation situation or no autocorrelation problem or problem ok so this is rho, when rho equal to 0 then this is called as a perfectly perfectly negatively autocorrelated negatively autocorrelated ok then it is perfectly positively autocorrelated ok then so far as a greater than 1 less than 1 uh, it is very a, you know complex issue how you have to uh, properly interpret until unless you know the exact value of the term rho ok so it greater than 1 means it may be uh, it may be 2 it may be 1.2 it may be 1.3 it may be 10 it may be 20 it may be 30 like this so similarly less than 1 means it may be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 point, uh, 0.4 like this so so uh, so the range will be completely different until unless you know the exact range then you cannot interpret properly because uh, uh, auto like multicollinearity autocorrelation cannot be removed completely ok so autocorrelation almost most of the cases it will be always there but uh, so problem is uh, uh, how um, how much you have to bear it ok so what is the extent where the autocorrelation is not uh, serious problem that will not affect the goodness fit of the model because ultimately so our aim is to have the best fitted models which is free from all such problems so now to have the best fitted models autocorrelation cannot be removed completely but autocorrelation there should be specific range if the value of autocorrelation will be that specific range then obviously it will give you the indication of best fit fitness of the model so otherwise it will be very uh, problematic so that means like see you see here so, uh, graphically the picture will be coming like this so so far as autocorrelation problem is concerned let us say i will take it here ut and i will take it here ut minus 1 so there is so, uh, with respect to ut minus 1 i have to plot uh, 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 ut so that means ut is a function of ut minus 1 so one way i have to take any ut minus 1 so corresponding to ut minus 1 the picture will be like this so this 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 may be another uh, one way this will be another way ok so this is how the linear relationship all about so for the non-linear shape is concerned then you know completely the picture will be like this ok so this may be like this so sometime up sometime down sometime positive sometime negative so like this this is ut this is ut minus 1 so that means here two things are very important first thing is what is the degree of association among the error terms this is the first issue if it degree is too high it is a problem if it is too low it is a problem so it should be uh, the optimum one so we will justify what should be the optimum one so until unless you go to that particular st uh, structures we cannot analyze it, we cannot say right now ok so this is one aspect and second aspect uh, the relationship degree of association means it is otherwise known as a degree of relationship but now the relationship can be linear can be non-linear ok can uh, can be positive can be negative so so whether it is a positive negative it is not at all issue so ultimately if it is a highly positive or highly negative it is a low positive low negative then obviously it is a serious problem so it should be in a range and that range has to be perfectly optimum so far as the best best fitness of the model cannot be a go other way around okay so that is how the entire system all about and uh, you know it, it, the relationship can be non-linear also which is which has one of the shortcomings in in the case of you know multicollinearity multicollinearity is the purely linear relationship here there is no such linear relationship among the 
error terms it can be linear it can be non linear okay so ultimately what is the, this is the how the structure of the autocorrelation problem so that means we get to know what is autocorrelation how is its nature and uh, 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 how we have to uh, you know uh, represent the situation so that is what the autocorrelation so now we like to know uh, why autocorrelation usually happen in this you know or you can say occur in the case of econometric modeling so the question is why why there is a autocorrelation problem so there is called term called as a sluggishness okay most of the time series variable in the real life situation are very interdependent okay if they are very interdependent then obviously they are committing of error will also interdependent okay so that's why there is a uh, by default there will be autocorrelation problem okay because it is it is the uh, association among the error terms but you know uh, by uh, you know uh, 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 real life situations <coughs> what we have observed that most of the uh, variables time series variable are interdependent if most the time series variable are interdependent then they are committing errors will be obviously by default will be uh, you know interdependent so that is one of the most important factor of why autocorrelation is exist in the uh, econometric modeling second uh, second is the in uh, because of interpolation and extrapolation interpolation extrapolation is a mathematical technique a, a which sometimes you know uh, you know very helpful for increasing um, data points okay increasing in, increasing the size of the data points so that means <coughs> sometimes you will extrapolate the data for instance suppose there are three variables one variable has a 10 another variable is a 15 another variable is a 12 okay so that means it going it is going against the econometric systems because econometric system needs that all these all these three variables have uniform uniform observations but now here 10 15 12 so obviously either you can go with 10 observations only without going for any interpolation and extrapolation or you can say uh, you have to extrapolate the data for you know 10 to 15 and 12 to 15 then you club it or 10 to 12 then 15, 15 out of 15 you have to take in 12 then uh, already third variable 12 is there so you can fit the model that is another way and third is you can extend both the variables to 15 then obviously it will be give you consist consistency samples uh, uh, sample size for all these three variables so that you can uh, you can uh, go for you know uh, estimations so this is one way how extrapolators uh, extra uh, population will help you to increase the sample size there is a very interesting techniques it's not an interpolation is one technique but under this technique uh, there are several methods through which you can you know extrapolate the data similarly suppose there is some missing observation in between so uh, it will help with you know by this you know interpolation and extrapolation uh, you can also uh, fulfill this uh, uh, fulfill this missing uh, observation it it may not be you know technically or mathematically it is correct but you know theoretically or you can say practically it is not so problem in fact if you go st statistically then this process is also not uh, you know very positive process until unless you check something else then one such thing is called as a autocorrelation that means the moment you will inter use interpolation and extrapolation to increase the sample size then obviously so it will lead uh, one hand it will increase the sample size in it will improve the degrees of freedom and it will help it will be very much helpful for significance of the parameters or you can say overall fitness of the model but in the other side it will add a extra problem to this issue is called as a autocorrelation you remember one thing if you have a if you have a model and a, 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 you know all these specification parameters are as highly statistically significant and r square overall fitness of the model denoted by r square is absolutely very high and f is also very significant then uh, it can be considered as a best fit models but uh, uh, in the same times if you know the auto if the autocorrelation value is extremely high or extremely low then still the model cannot be considered as the best fitted model so that means what we have discussed till now the fitness of the model is not sufficient because this is the necessary items which we have discussed you know to, to, for today's lecture or in future lectures we will discuss several such type of issues where the best fitness of the model is not a you know uh, a very small problem or small issue it is a very complicated very complex pictures uh, you know you have to you you will get to know when you will 
a, when you have various aspects of knowledge and econometrics, then you can come to oh, exactly, uh, uh, means you come to exactly in a point that what is the, you know, it is not so easy that you will get the best fitted models uh, after, you know, so many clicks only. So, it is very, very complicated problem because so many issues you have to discuss at a time. <coughs> okay. So, that means, uh, interpolation and extrapolation is another uh, uh, cause, uh, another cause which can, uh, you know, bring the autocorrelation issue. Okay. So, similarly, so this uh, first is, you know, uh, sl uh, sluggishness, first is sluggishness, then second is uh, interpolations interpolations or extrapolations, extrapolations and third uh, misspecifications, misspecification, misspecification of random top. Okay. You see, uh, uh, you know generally uh, we use error terms or random terms just to adjust the models. In a particular problem, in a particular setup, it is very, very difficult to, you know, identify all such variable which can influence y. You know, there are certain factors which cannot be measured, which cannot be easily quantified, which cannot be easily uh, represent in a or introduced in the particular systems. Like, you know, drought, famine, earthquake, terrorist attack, log factors, these are the things it cannot be easily you can say measurable. So, for these factors the proxy is used as a error component. In fact, there is another type of proxy called as a dummy variable technique. So, we will discuss a little bit later, but in the case of for these variables or sub, uh, for these things we are introducing the error term. That means, we are observing that the variables which we are not incorporate that can be influenced by u term only, but you know. Uh, there are certain cases, it is not that every time whatever variable you could not identify that you have to put it in error terms. So, there should not be situation that the percentage of error should be uh, means overtake the percentage of explained variable. So, if the explained variable percentage, percentage will be very high than error percentage, then obviously you are in the right track. But if the uh, other way around, then you are in the wrong track and that is one of the major issues and that may be lead to the or serious autocorrelation problem. Then auto we remember autocorrelation is a negative aspect of best fitness of the model. So, it has to be op or the value should be optimum and it should be as per the accuracy of be best fitness of the model. Otherwise, you have to redesign, reformulate and reestimate the model till you get the better fitted models. Okay. So, misspecification of random term or error term is also one of the factor which can influence. For instance, uh, Let us say uh, last class I have discussed the uh, stock price uh, that is you know uh, uh, BSC as a function of uh, index of industrial productions, uh, money supply, uh, wholesale price index and exchange rate. Okay. So, now this uh, uh, this particular uh, fun, uh, uh, you know by any chance I mean it is now as per my knowledge that the stock price as a function of economic growth, money supply, uh, inflation and exchange rate. So, uh, you know artificially what I will do, so I will I, I means obviously there is some uh, when we repeat this model there will be some error term here. So, the, the error term which can capture some of the other variables like you know uh, government stability or you can say governmental policy or you can say market news that may be influenced the stock price. But uh, since we are not uh, representing all these items at a time here and it cannot be fitted in the model directly. So, we are assuming that these uh, you will capture all these weightage uh, to this stock price, but you remember uh, IIP is a measurable quantified and it is readily available, money supply is quantified measurable readily available, wholesale price index uh, indicator of inflation is readily measurable and it is also available, exchange rate is also readily available. Okay. So, now by any chance artificially we what you will do, you will drop uh, you know inflation factors or let us say we will influence. Uh, you will drop the money supply factors. Then obviously, if you uh, drop all these variable artificially, then it may be misspecified. Okay, it may be misspecified. Uh, it nor it is not a question of maybe. It is definitely the case of misspecification. So that is one way the misspecification order. And similarly, and that leads to uh, that leads to in fact a autocorrelation problem. Similarly, there is a 
mathematical imperfection of the model. For instance, uh, we are discussing about this particular setup. Uh, in that in that particular setup, uh, the we are representing that the model will be linear in nature. So, okay, so the way we have discussed why. Uh, y i equal to alpha uh, alpha plus beta uh, beta 1 beta x or you can say beta 1 x 1 beta 2 x 2 beta 3 x 3 up to beta x k. So, in that particular context, so we are uh, putting all these things in a linear shape, okay? but you know most of the things cannot be in a, a, a you know linear shape. So, there there are certain things it can be non uh, you know non linear in nature but you know ultimately you have to transfer into linear by using lots of transformation rule which we'll discuss uh, sometimes later but you know if you if something needed transformation and if you are not doing and you are going with your original setup then obviously it will lead to autocorrelation okay because by default the mathematical uh, mathematical identification of the model is not cor correct so the, there is a myth mathematical imperfection so that is how the uh, you know there is a way to you can say autocorrelation problem okay so this is misspecification of the uh, random term or mathematical form of the models there may be two regions okay then i have i have just identified here uh, that uh, a stock price as a function of uh, index of industrial production money supply wholesale price index and exchange rate okay so i'll uh, i'll add another item say, say for cpi consumer price index okay Sometimes you know wholesale price index and consumer price index, uh, they, they may have different impact, but sometimes they look like same. Okay, so now uh, if I if I put uh, BSI BSC uh, function of IIP MS wholesale price index and exchange rate, then obviously uh, and uh, also function of consumer price index, then uh, obviously uh, this is called as a over identified model. It means unnecessarily you are introducing consumer price index where you have already use the inflation factor WPI. So, now if we really in that particular case you know uh, it will lead to one of such problem is called as you can say autocorrelation problem. Uh, similarly, suppose this is the optimum case. We just uh, uh, increase this room so that it can be visible properly, right? Now, uh, you see here. So here we have taken uh, BSC as a function of IIP, um, uh, you know, money supply, uh, wholesale price index, and exchange rate. So now, if we add another variable, say consumer price index, into the systems, then there is a enough possibility that uh, the, the model is called as over identified models. If there is over identified model, then definitely there will be some kind of autocorrelation, means a high presence of autocorrelation. Similarly, uh, uh, what I will say, this may be the optimum case, but uh, artificially I will drop this variable say money supply. Okay, So, I will just now integrate BSU with the IIP, WPI and ER. In that particular case, it is called as a under identified models. Okay, under identified model is also have a autocorrelation problem. That means uh, uh, you need to have a optimum model. Okay, so optimum specification is very important. That is how very beginning uh, I have very uh, clearly mentioned that your theoretical knowledge must be very perfect. And before you go for econometric modeling, your problem formulation or you know se setting up of the problem should be perfectly okay okay if it is not perfectly okay then obviously there may be chance of misspecification of the random amount term there there may be chance of misspecification of the mathematical form of this model there may be chance of you can say uh, you can say over identified models then under identified model in all these cases it will be uh, ultimate result is the high and high autocorrelation and if the this is the case then obviously this model cannot be considered as a best fitted model. Okay, so we we must be very careful about that. Okay, so that is how it's called as a uh, over identified model, identified model or under identified model. So this is another uh, region. Since uh, say sometimes, uh, sometimes you know, uh, 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 there is in, in question of lag introductions. We we are just discussing y t equal to alpha bit plus beta x t plus u t. But you know, I I will take a models like this. Or lag introduction means instead of taking y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t, I can take you know y t as a function of alpha plus beta y t minus one plus u t. Or I I can take y t equal to alpha plus beta one 
y t minus 1 plus beta 2 y t minus 2 plus u t. <coughs> so, this is how I can also extend. If I will follow this particular structure, then it is called as a lag introduction. If there is a lag introduction, then the, there is enough chance that uh, uh, multiple unit will increase and uh, in the enough chance there is a high and a high autocorrelation. So, lag introduction will le lead to autocorrelation problem, but you cannot avoid. Th these are all sometimes very much required for different point of view and for different objectives and different uh, you know different uh, interesting uh, structure of econometric modeling. So, these are all required you cannot avoid all these things, but within that problem. So, you have to find out the optimum solution. Okay. So, this is how this there is called as a and another cause is called as a manipulation of data. Sometimes lots of people with the respect to lack of data availability. So, they 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 sometimes manipulate the data. The moment you will manipulate the data, then obviously the one of the interesting problem will be will be the autocorrelation problem. So, you must be very careful about for that. Okay. So, uh, another is manipulation of data. Then similarly, then there is called as a term testinarity. Okay. So, testinarity is another issue uh, through which you can say a uh, autocorrelation problem can be detected. If the variable is not testinary, that means uh, what is mean by testinary? Testinary means a series having a mean variance are equal with respect to different time periods, then it will be called as a testinary. If there is a such, uh, if there is any kind of volatility in between, then it is called as a non testinary or that that is usually called as a unit root problem. We have a separate chapters to discuss all these unit root problems. So, right now we are not discussing, but we remember one thing. So, a non testinary issue will also autocorrelation problem. So, similarly, then there is we have just now discussed the transformation rule. If the proper transformation rule is not uh, okay, then obviously it will lead to autocorrelation problem. These are the <coughs> These are the specification uh, through which <coughs> you can say uh, uh, we can say you have to uh, represent the various regions uh, so that autocorrelation can occur. So, so it is a by default there will be a, 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 you know autocorrelation because there are many factors which cannot be in your control which can uh, you know firstly lead to autocorrelation problem. Yes, we we need to uh, what is the alternative? we need to have some solution Pro means you have to make lots of compromise so to get a best fitted model. So, now th this is the cause behind this autocorrelation then next is detection criteria uh, detection criteria <coughs> detection criteria you remember one thing uh, there are there are uh, numbers and numbers techniques uh, 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 techniques are available. Uh, to calc uh, to you know measure the autocorrelation or uh, the basic objective is to know the what is the degree that is that is more important degree of association among the error terms. So, so what is the uh, amount to uh, the of you know degree of association that is more important to project uh, or to connect or to integrate the best fitness of the model. So, one of the standard measure to you can say to know the level of uh, you know uh, level of autocorrelation is the called as a take a item called as a Durbin Watson D statistic it is otherwise called as a DW statistics ok DW statistics. <coughs> what is DW statistics? It is sometimes denoted as a small d. So, d is calculated as a it is calculated as a summation e 2 minus e 2 minus 1 whole square t equal to of course, it will be this is e ok t equal to 2 to n by summation e t squares t equal to 1 to n why it is t equal to 2 here because if it is 1 then it becomes 0. So, there is no such zero term. So, obviously, if it is 2 then it will be t minus 1. 1 then it will be uh, uh, 0. So, the obviously it is insignificant also uh, because of if you start with t equal to 1. So, obviously the starting point is equal to t minus t. So, now you see we like to know what is the uh, what is the Darwin Watson d statistic d value because d value will influence the degree of uh, autocorrelation present in the systems. Okay. So, how do we calculate for that? So, let us we simplify this one. So, this if we simplify then it will be coming summation e t squares plus summation e t minus e t minus 1 squares 
ओके माइनस टू समेशन इटी इनटू इटी माइनस वन ओके सो टी इक्वल टू 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 एन देन दिस इज समेशन टी इक्वल टू 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 एन देन समेशन टी इक्वल टू वन टू एन डिवाइड बाय ऑफ कोर्स टी इक्वल टू 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 एन हियर सो समेशन इटी स्क्वेयर समेशन इटी is just t equal to 1 to n so this is how the simplification is all about okay so now you see here so what i have to do oh, but you remember summation e t square is equal to summation e t minus 1 square when t equal to 2 to infinity t equal to 2 to 2 to infinity when n stands to oh, infinity then you know uh, the difference between e t and e t minus 1 will be equal ok. So, in that case that means when n and n is large and large and large then obviously uh, the lag will be minimum uh, the lag difference will be very minimum. So, that is why summation e t square is equal to summation e, square, e t e minus 1 squares ok. So, that means, so we can call it 2 e t squares. So, 2 summation e t squares ok t equal to 2 to n minus 2 summation e t e t minus 1 divided by uh, sorry uh, 2 uh, ok all right uh, summation e t squares e t squares t equal to 1 to n t equal to 1 to n ok. So, then this is t equal to 1 divided by summation e t squares t equal to 1 to n ok. So, <coughs> it is already uh, there. So, t, e t minus squares e t minus square equal to 1. So, you will get the result 2 minus 2 this particular item is a e rho component. You remember <coughs> we start with y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t and u t equal to rho u t minus 1 plus b t ok. So, that means e rho means this rho is the, the covariance of u t u t minus 1 by u t ok variance of u t. So, this is how the raw component and this is how the raw is all about. So, that means, so we have the point here. So, that means if we will simplify further then d will be coming like this d equal to uh, 2 uh, 2 into uh, uh, 2 into 1 minus raw head ok 1 minus raw head. So, this is the Durbin Watson D statistic. So, D, D Durbin Watson D statistic D is represented by 2 into 1 minus rho. So, you see here uh, rho we have highlighted there which is equal to minus 1 less than equal to 1 ok. Corresponding to this value D value will also indicate the degree of association because in the without having the Durbin Watson statistic theoretically we justify that if the rho value is you know diverse uh, converse, uh, means converse towards the minus 1 or you can say converse towards uh, no sorry diverse towards minus 1 or you can say diverse towards plus 1 then obviously this will lead to autocorrelation problem at the higher degree. So, if it is a converse to 0 then obviously the degree of autocorrelation is very low. So, now co co you know putting all these value then we like to know what is the d structure you see yes. So, we have uh, the one case different case is extreme case is rho equal to 0 if rho equal to 0 then d equal to 2 into 1 minus rho ok 1 minus rho. So, that means 2 into 1 minus 0 ok. So, it will ultimately equal to 2. So, the, uh, that means uh, when rho equal to 0 then uh, that means if rho equal to 0 then d equal to simply 2 ok. So, now since rho equal to 0 no autocorrelation. So, now when d value is there then it will indicate that there is no autocorrelation there is no autocorrelation ok. So, similarly, um, if uh, rho equal to minus 1, then obviously d equal to 2 into 1 minus into minus 1. So, it will be equal to 2 into 1 plus 1, so 2. So, the t this will be equal to 4 only. So, that means when rho equal to minus 1, d equal to 4. So, that means it is a perfectly, perfectly negative correlations, perfectly negative autocorrelation. Okay. So, now if we put rho equal to 1 then d equal to 2 into 1 minus 1. Okay. So, d equal to 2 into 1 minus 1. So, it is nothing but 0. So, 2 into 0 it will equal to 0 then it is called as a perfectly perfectly negative 
negative autocorrelations, perfectly negative autocorrelations, all right. So, now, now what is oh, what is the situation here? So, the picture will be coming like this. So, you see here. So, I will draw here. So, the, and this is 0 F D and I will draw a curve like this. So, this is this is the situation where D equal to 2 and I will take D upper limit D Durbin uh, uh, you know upper limit Durbin Watson and Durbin lower limit then this is 4 minus D U then this is 4 minus D L ok. So, this side is negative auto and this side is positive auto and this side no auto no auto ok no auto correlations ok. So, this is how the structure is all about. So, that means you see here yes, if you simplify if you simplify this one. So, that means uh, uh, generally when we will go for any st statistical software particularly you know uh, eViews or you can say SPSS or you can say uh, Matlab etcetera then obviously they will directly give you the Darwin Watson value statistic. So, now uh, you know the way uh, you mine uh, auto correlation coefficient ranges between minus 1 to plus 1 then if you simplify in terms of d then d ranges from uh, uh, minus 1 is 2 here. So, 4 then 0 ok. So, that means 0 less than 4 uh, 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 4 less than uh, 0 less than 4 0 less than uh, 4 2 ok. So, 0 less than 4. So, this is this will be d value ok. So, this will be d value when it is 0, 0 is called as a plus 1 situation. So, that means the, uh, this this will become like this and this will become to minus 1 it will be for like this. So, in between when there is a 2 then 2 will lead to you can say 0 autocorrelation. So, that means, so there are you can say three extremes here. So, far as the Durbin Watson statistic is concerned. So, one extreme is 0, another extreme is 2, another extreme is say 4 ok. So, this is 0. So, uh, you know 0 means this is uh, no auto, no sorry uh, this is 0 uh, 0 level. So, that means it is a d equal to 0. So, d equal to 2 and d equal to 4 ok. So, when the d equal to 0 then obviously, this particular structure is called as a um, when d equal to 0 it is a, it is coming you know positive perfectly positive autocorrelation ok. d equal to 0 it will uh, it will be coming uh, perfectly sorry negative autocorrelation negative autocorrelation this is a negative autocorrelation ok. So, this is no autocorrelations this is no autocorrelations ok. This is positive positively negative this is positively negatively autocorrelation positively negatively autocorrelation when d equal to 4 ok. So, this is positively positively negatively autocorrelation ok. So, that means it is just in opposite direction all right this is in opposite direction. So, there are uh, means basic idea is here that uh, the Darwin Watson statistic has a three different ranges. So, d equal to 0, d equal to 2, d equal to 4. So, uh, that leads to uh, the autocorrelation coefficient lies between minus 1 to plus 1. So, now uh, 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 0 to is 1 extreme uh, one extreme range and another extreme is 2 to 4 ok. So, now if it is uh, means it cannot uh, go beyond 0 and it cannot go beyond you can say 4 that is suppose the d value status. So, what is the conclusion here? why we need you know transfer this autocorrelation coefficient to Darwin version strategy because autocorrelation has the negative dimension and positive dimension, but here we are putting all this transformation into the positive dimension. Of course, the interpretation is a little bit different with a different value, so but we are in the positive side now. So, now we have to see uh, what is the positive sequence that means if it is moving from 0 to 4 where the a turning point is at the 2. So, now if it is close to 2 this side or close to this uh, close to the 2 that side then obviously, there is no such autocorrelation problem or it is in a decreasing trend of autocorrelation towards the optimality. So, 
So now if it is close to 0, it is serious problem of autocorrelation. If it is close to 4, then it is serious problem of the autocorrelation. So ultimately, the optimum range is in between something. So that means you have to find out its midpoint 0 0.2 and here you find out 2 to 4 the midpoint. Okay. So in between these two, if the autocorrelation is lies, then that is you can say consider as the uh, best uh, value or best association uh, in that association in that uh, range then the model can be considered as the best, but if it is less than that or more than that then obviously it will lead to serious uh, problems. So, in that case you have to redesign the estimate till you get the better fitted model. So, okay, this is all uh, uh, means this is about the way of the Durbin Watson statistic. However, uh, this statistic has a to, uh, one interesting limitation. Uh, one interesting limitation is that this particular statistic cannot be perfectly used when there is a, a you know distributive lag models where there is a, a you know uh, dependent variable and you know independent variable and you can say lag dependent variable. So in that context, it's a, it is the term called as the Durbin H statistics. Durbin H statistic is generally defined as a like this. So in that case, Durbin H statistic is calculated. Darwin H statistic the value is row head which we have already derived square root of t by 1 minus t variance of beta heads okay and provided the model will be like this so y equal to alpha plus beta y t minus 1 plus gamma x t plus u t this is the model which we have derived but ultimately this is the model which we derived, but ultimately our starting model is y equal to alpha plus beta x t. Okay. So, you can put it here a, a, a beta, you can put it here rho, no, no problem at all, just we are interchanging. So, this is you know rho, rho head equal to 1 minus d by 2, which we have derived here, so because we have derived d equal to 2 into 2 minus, uh, 2 into 1 minus rho. 1 minus rho. So, similarly, if we calculate simplify, then rho equal to 1 minus d by 2. Okay. So, d, uh, rho multiplied by t in minus 1 by t, t is you know si number of sample observations and variance of beta head will be like this. If we calculate it, then you will get Durbin uh, edge statistics. So, then again Durbin edge statistic will give you signal the presence of autocorrelation. In fact, the table is also there to name the optimum range. Okay. So, this is how we have to we have to you know detect or you can say we have to know the uh, degree of involvement of autocorrelation in the econometric modeling all right so now now we get to know what is the darwin watson statistic and there are you know certain other tests also uh, there's like you know q test then von neumann ratio test then you know uh, B, bg test so many things are there for instance if you take bg test then you know your starting point will be like this y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t then what you have to do uh, uh, after uh, you know estimation then you will get alpha uh, y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x t okay so uh, by the way we will get error term uh, error term e t or you can say u t so now what you have to do so by a, a, any chance you will get alpha head a, a, then beta head standard error of alpha head standard error of beta head t of alpha head t of beta head then r square then f uh, then we will add another component now Durbin Watson strategy particularly for this autocorrelation issue okay so r square f and d double provided there must be you know ess and rss then TSS, these are all the uh, other side of the problem in spite of the you know means in addition to this alpha head and beta head start T of alpha head and T of beta head. So, you need to have th this is our you know as, uh, assignment. So, now if by any chance if Darwin Arson statistic is say close to 4 or you can say close to 0, then obviously you need to you need to find out uh, some solution and uh, uh, then accordingly you have to test where is that exact problem process either you have to calculate this one so or you have to be careful about this that means this you know by any chance if there is such autocorrelation then you have to the, uh, this is how Durbin Watson will give you indication but another way once you have ut and yt then what you have to do so you have to uh, uh, integrate with uh, ut equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 xt plus gamma 1 yt minus 1 plus gamma 2 
means rho 2 over u t minus 2 plus continue like in. So, you uh, you set another regression equation, okay? then you have there r square value. Here r square before the situation and r square after the situation. Okay? So, that means you see uh, let us say you you do not like to use Durbin Watson statistics. So, what you have to do usual procedure? So, you have uh, you have estimated models y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x okay? provided a t of alpha head, t of beta head then you know you get to know what is the significance of this particular parameter whether it is 5 percent or 10 percent or 1 percent similarly for beta head. Then uh, other statistic for overall fitness of the model is ESS, RSS, you know TSS, then R square, adjusted R square and F statistic. Okay? But we are not, not uh, discussing anything about Darwin Watson statistic, but we sometimes uh, uh, suppose uh, this specification are uh, statistically significant this side and statistically significant of the other side that is overall fitness of the model. Still uh, the model cannot be considered as the best fitted model until unless you check this autocorrelation issue. So, now we like to know wh whether this problem has autocorrelation or not, if autocorrelation uh, to what extent or what degree. So, uh, Durbin Watson is one of the statistics which already given the idea how we have to detect that autocorrelation problem and what is the optimum range where the existence of autocorrelation will not serious problem to best fitness of the model. So, now here what you have to do? Another way to detect the autocorrelation is the once you get ut then you fit another regression equation ut as a function of xt ut minus 1 ut minus 2 and you take the uh, number of uh, exact number of lag length. So, that is you know there is a two statistic which we can det uh, detect that la, uh, exact lag length that is called as AIC statistic AKI information criteria and similarly there is SBC criteria uh, 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 FPA, uh, prediction uh, criteria. So, like uh, there is a lots of uh, criteria like this. So, it will choose the lag length on the basis of lag length then uh, we have to we have to fit a regression equation and have the r square value. So, if then accordingly you have to uh, find out a statistic n minus p into r square uh, followed by chi square distribution. Okay. So, that means p is lag order, lag, lag order here and n is the sample size n is the sample size. If this chi square statistic is statistically significant then there is a autocorrelation, autocorrelation is a serious problem. If that particular item is not significant then that means there may be autocorrelation, but it is not a serious problem. Ultimately when the degree you, you know you go by this way and, and uh, you know if, and if you are not interested for Darwin Watson strategy, but by any chance if you get you know R square uh, this chi square is a significant here then obviously you have to redesign and reformulate, but you know uh, when uh, when it will give you indication significant, then you are not sure what is the exactly range whether uh, by by the criteria of Durbin Watson statistic. If the if the Durbin Watson uh, value is you know close to two or uh, you can say say 1.9 or 2.2 something like this, then in that case it is not a problem. So autocorrelation is there, but that problem cannot be uh, affect the goodness fit of the model. So, this is not a serious issue, but in that case it will detect the autocorrelation, but it will not give you the degree of a uh, degree of involvement of autocorrelation. That is why Darwin Watson statistic is considered as the best uh, uh, best statistic uh, means best statistical to, to detect the autocorrelation problem. Okay? So, this is how you have to uh, you have to uh, you get to know the uh, you know structure of this autocorrelation problem. Causes and causes and its detection criteria. In fact, there are multiple criteria, but uh, one of the interesting criteria is the Darwin Watson statistic and its uh, uh, extreme range and optimum range. So, now uh, uh, next question is uh, what are the consequences if uh, there is a high autocorrelation? Uh, last class we have discussed that uh, if there is a multicollinearity, again there is a problem whether you have to go ahead with the multicollinearity or you have to solve the multicollinearity. That means, uh, that depends upon objective specification. If your objective specification is if, uh, you want to go for prediction, then obviously high R square with low significant T ratio, uh, you can go ahead. But uh, uh, if it is vice versa, if for instance, if for second objective for reliability is concerned, then obviously 
multiple integer CDS issue. So, you have to remove first, then you have to go for forecasting or policy. Similarly, in the autocorrelation. So, autocorrelation obviously, when you will get a model, estimated models, it will go through this theorem, best, uh, best linear unbiased estimator. That means, what are the parameters uh, you have received that should be considered as a best. Okay? So, now, when there is autocorrelation, it will go against the blue property. It will go against the blue property. Okay, so, that means, it cannot be based, it may not be linear, it may not be unbiased, or that means, it will give you oh, high variance. If it is high variance, then obviously, by default, the statistical means this parameter will be low significant. Okay, so, to get high significant, high weightage and high goodness fit of the model, then obviously, the variance of that particular parameter should be less and less and less. So, if, but the by, by, by default, if there is autocorrelation problem, then obviously, the variance will be very high for this, uh, any for a particular parameter. So, that what you have to do ultimately. So, you have to redesign or restructure the system till you get the, uh, uh, you know, best uh, uh, or optimum structure where you can uh, use that model for, you can say, for forecasting or policy use. So, this is how the, you know, consequences side. So, that means, uh, but uh, most probably, you know, when you will go for, uh, 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 when you have autocorrelation problem, so it will not affect all these blue property. It will affect only few properties. For instance, uh, we have a properties called as unbiasedness. Uh, for instance, unbiasedness. Then there is linearity. Okay. Then there is consistent. Uh, consistent, then there is the efficiency. Okay, so that means when there is autocorrelation, this will be always uh, there, but it, it will not affect much. But it will affect the efficiency property. That means, what is the efficiency? That means it is the cluster of minimum variance and it unbiasedness. Uh, unbiasedness property may be there, but it will lead to high and high variance. So that uh, that is how it can be a uh, means it can the, in that case that variable um, that model cannot be considered as a best method and that cannot be also used for forecasting or policy use. So, that means you need to have a, a solution. So, that means if the particularly by Durbin Watson start uh, criteria if the value of autocorrelation is you know less than to uh, less than to say 1.5 or you can say more than to 2.5 then it is a serious problem. In that case, there is a redesign or re-estimation of that particular model. So, now, one of the such interesting, that means, obvious problem is how to get out the solution. Okay? So, what are the criteria to get the solution? So, there are two standard techniques to get solve this autocorrelation problem. So, that is solutions issue. So, solution is one standard of problem is use a application of GLS technique, application of GLS technique that is generalized least square methods. Okay, we are GLS technique or sometimes if you apply WLS techniques, we will discuss detail when we will discuss the heterosclerosity issue. So, uh, there is application of GLS technique and another is uh, you have to go for transformation. Okay, transformation, transformation of variable. Okay, so these are the two best solution to uh, you know solve the autocorrelation problem. So that means if there is autocorrelation problem, instead of OLS, you use different techniques like GLS and WLS. Even if you will apply other techniques like maximum likelihood estimator, that may be solve the problem. But uh, the best technique is generalized least square to solve the autocorrelation problem. In addition to that, so you can go for transformation rule so that the variable can be transferred into a proper shape. Uh, then after transformation, if you use that particular mod, uh, variable for modeling, then obviously uh, it will it will satisfy the minimum variance criteria. That means uh, altogether the uh, para, uh, the model will follow the blue theorem, best linear un unbiased estimators. So in comparison with the previous situation and after transformation situation. So now, uh, but you uh, if you will use transformation immediately, you should not use the transformation loss until unless you there is some serious problem. So first you detect the problem, then you go for transformation. Otherwise, without any such problem, if you go for transformation, then you will lose the originality. Okay, so that's why you first detect the problem. If that the problem is there, then you have to go for transformation and sort out the solution. This is how the autocorrelation all about. So we get to know what is the exact 
you know exact problem of autocorrelation what is you know its impact what are its future what is your natures how it comes to the econometric modeling that means what are the causes behind all the g autocorrelation issue then the detection criteria and also its consequences and finally what is the uh, what are the procedural measures through which we can solve the autocorrelation problem with this we can conclude this particular session thank you very much have a nice day